Ghidra. There's been lots of drama about it, lots of videos about it, but I'm getting questions. What does it actually do? People want to know the basics. They don't want this high-level stuff. They want to know what it's all about. We're talking about IDA or IDA. People have never seen it. They've got no idea what it is. So let's take the mystery away. Let's explain what these things are. They're decompilers. So stay tuned and we'll pull it apart for you. So here we have opening up IDA. This is just a double click, it comes to this screen. On this screen you can see that I can put into this a PE executable or dynamic library or DLL files or an ELF file or a MAC file from Unix or Java. I've got .NET. I've also got some more obscure operating systems, um, things like OS2 or NetWare, all kinds of things. I can even, if I really wanted to, get into Amiga files and I can get into consoles, Xbox, Dreamcast. You can basically disassemble any type of file with this tool. We've got Windows files here again and I'm going to go for a PE executable. Now let's pick something that we all know, shall we? So I'm going to open up a file that you've got just about on any Windows machine. I'm going to open up Microsoft Write. It's a very small executable. It won't have much code to it and it shouldn't uh, be too difficult to pull it apart. So here we go, we've got the welcome screen. Now this welcome screen has got analysis options on it. So we're going to go through the standard analysis options. And we're going to create import so we can see what comes into this executable from other external sources. And we're going to do a full analysis on it. And here we go, we're going to click. Yep, yeah, we've got everything we need. And we're going to click next. And we've also got the processor options. I'm going to accept the defaults and go through the analysis. Then we can go through and also debug this. And of course, being a Microsoft file, I'm going to hook into the Microsoft debugger, WinDBG. And it's going to download the symbols for this particular write.exe. So we've got all the debug information we might need. Now, by the way, that's something that's missing in the new Ghidra. So here we have the console. As you can see, I can see the uh, functions on the left. I can see a graphical display of how those functions fit together on the right. As you click through each function on the right hand side, if you double click, I should say, you'll actually get the information in assembly popping up as to what's in that section. Now, this is the older version. This is, I think, Ida 5 or up to Ida 7 now, but they're all very similar. So we've got a hex view, the structures view, get what's numerated you can also get what's imported from other external files and what is exported out of this and as you click through each of the functions you can just generally see that it's going to show you a graphical view where you are within the program and how each of the functions comes together so this is really what it's all about this is a decompiler the executable goes in and it pulls out the assembly and shows me how those functions stack together inside now, as I click through the modules, I can do different things to them. I can add breakpoints, which is really cool because I can go through and debug the code and get it to break at a certain point. I can even delete functions out of its executable. Now, any work I'm doing, by the way, is saved in the IDA database. It creates a database for the job that I'm working on. I can share that database with other developers later on. So here we have the hexadecimal view. And as you can see, it's got some comments in there created by the system to tell me what the file was it created this assembly language from. And as you scroll down, of course, you can get a graphical view as well. And you can click on each of the functions and you can rename these functions as well to make them make more sense. Now here we go, it's more interesting. I've pressed F5. Now we've gone into the C pseudocode or the C code. Now from here, it's a lot easier to decipher what's going on. I can go through each of the individual functions and press F5 and pull up the C code. It makes a lot more sense than reading assembly. So at this point, you've now got a decompiler that not only puts it into assembly, but into C code, which a lot of people understand. Up at the menu up here, we've got a lot of little tools, all to aid us in finding resources or working out parts of the XE, because XEs have different sections to them. And of course, you might not be in an XE, you might be in an Xbox file or a PlayStation file. 
Now going across to Ghidra. So we're going to go and run the batch file. And today... This episode brought to you by the Virus Doctor. Yes, I pulled them apart, but he helps you get rid of them. Today, Microsoft has decided that, uh, hey, this is not a trusted program. Well, hey, Microsoft must have been quick off the game, hey. So here we go into Ghidra for the first, very first time. So I agree, and in we go. And that's Ida in the background there. Just ignore that for now. So out comes Ghidra. And this is running in a Java virtual machine, so it's starting all the bits it needs, and up it comes. Now from here, I'm going to create a project. Um, it doesn't matter what you call it, but this project is going to be either shared or not shared with other people on my team. So in this case, I'm just going to just give it a random name. But in the background here, um, this is kind of the introduction help file. It's very thorough. It's a fantastic system. Um, it's had a lot of time spent on making it very user friendly to read. Um, you can go through that in your own pace and learn all kinds of different things about how Ghidra works, what the windows do, what the toolbars do, how it decompiles. You can, you can get a lot of information out of this help file. Alright, so again, like I was saying, we're going to go and create a project. We're going to create a non-shared project, but just like in IDA, you can create a shared project just by getting the database file that gets created and share that with other developers to work on. I'm just going to call it test and bring it in. Now from here, I'm just going to grab that same right file, pick it up and drag and drop straight into Ghidra, and that will trigger all of its analysis facilities. So I'm just going to drag and drop it in now. Okay, so that's now importing the file. This gives me a bit of a summary as to what it's importing. And it's a PE header. And here we go through the import process. This can take some time so that hourglass does get quite boring. As it imports, it's going to start finding specific parts of the executable and it's going to start finding different exports and imports and it's going to start populating the fields in a moment that we're going to see. Still importing. There we go, processing imports. Getting all the variables, collecting all the symbol files. Just while it's doing this, one of the things that IDA did is it allowed me to hook into the Windows debugger. That doesn't appear to be the case with Ghidra. Um, it doesn't quite have that facility. I'm sure somebody's going to write that using the open source or they're gonna bring that into a future release. Okay, we're almost there. Right, and of course, if you trust the NSA, it's up to you whether or not you allow your firewall to let this software run around. Now on this page, you've got the summary of everything you've found. It is a pretty good summary actually. It tells you the file name, tells you where the um, import addresses are, export addresses, where the run code starts from. Um, it tells you all about the bits and pieces about this file. This is something that IDA doesn't do at the splash screen when you first start it up. And also tells you who made the file and the copyright owner. All the basics you need to know about the file. Now back at this screen, not a lot you can do with it. Doesn't yet look like IDA, but if we were to right click on this and go down to open with, and then go into the code browser, suddenly you start to see something that looks very similar. It looks a lot like IDA. Now let's finish analyzing it. Let's turn on all the analyzing features. Very similar, when you start up IDA, it asks you the similar sort of questions. And here we go, we've got assembly code, again, just like IDA. Bearing in mind that unless you get a free version of IDA, we're on the early versions, it's a very expensive product. This is free. This Ghidra is free, and it's doing so far almost everything you'd expect of IDA. 
Now, some of the differences here is we've got more little windows, but maybe in the newer version of IDA, it's set out differently. I don't know, I have an older version, but I've got the functions down one side over here. There are all the functions there, and I've got the code on the right side there, and I've got the output window at the bottom. Come across to Ghidra, and in there, I've actually got the PE header stuff at the top, which IDA does not have. Then underneath that, you've got the symbol tree and you've got the functions and things like that. And you've got the assembly code smack bang in the middle there. And in IDA, I had to actually trigger to bring across the pseudo code, but in Ghidra, it's just there. Now, back in IDA, the only way to get the PE stuff is to use something like PE view, which I've got on the screen at the moment. You can go through and pull out just the PE header and you can get the information you need from there. But how handy is it that Ghidra has got this all built in? So this is something in IDA we don't have. So again, back in Ghidra, here we go. We've got the same sort of things that PE view is showing us. We've got the text section, the data section, we've got the resource section, it's all there. So in one tool, we can scroll through and view everything. So if you're still with us, this is what it's all about, decompiling, figuring out what's inside that exe file. So IDA is just a fancy tool for pulling it apart. And here we go, I'm just comparing, just showing that uh, you've actually got the data section here in PE view, which I would use alongside IDA. And of course, back in Ghidra, the data section also appears there at the very top. And yeah, it's very easy to get to. So here's his IDA without it. She's so got the code. You can't see the PE header stuff, which is kind of painful. But anyway, back into IDA, as you click through the different functions in the right hand side, you either get the graphical view or you can get various other views, but you get the view of what's in that function. And in this case, I'm looking at a subroutine. It's randomly named because when you decompile, you don't get the original function names and something has to be given those names. Here we have a uh, obviously an import because it does have a name. So it's obviously come from something it uses to do its job. And here we have the pseudocode or the C code. So it's actually pretty good code. Um, and I'm just going to poke around just a little bit through the functions and the code um, just to see how it behaves. So if I go down and find a similar function in Ghidra, just here again, it's got functions with random names. Again, when you compile, so you've got some C code, you compile it into an exe, all the function names go missing because they just become links inside the memory and inside the code. So this is randomly called them names. Anything with a real name is obviously an import from somewhere else. But as you can see, as I click through the functions, I'm getting the assembly in the middle and I'm getting across on the far right hand side, the decompilation C code. And if I find the similar stuff here in IDA, Again, it amazes me because IDA is worth a lot of money. That's probably why no one's really seen it because only the, the top end people who play with decompilation can actually afford it. But um, this Ghidra is, is so far doing almost anything I would want it to do in from IDA, but in a free product and more. I don't have the PE header stuff in IDA. Again, here I go through, just looking through the code. Um, because the random generation of the names obviously it's different between Ida and Ghidra. I'm just kind of trying to find some uh, some code to compare um, just to see that the decompilation in the C looks very similar, which so far everything I've seen it does. Uh, and all the tests that I've done, it's pretty similar. Um, sometimes there are some loops that are interpreted different between Ida and Ghidra, but the outcome of the code is pretty much the same. Okay, so at this point, um, again, I'm just checking for the validity of that code. Just making sure, because that's the ultimate aim, is to decompile this into something I can read to figure out what the heck this executable does. Now, obviously, I could also use the strings tool, could find out what strings are in this. I can find out what resources it uses. I can go pretty, you know, pretty crazy on it. Um, but this is just introduction, just to show you some of the power of this. Uh, one thing I do like is that in Ghidra I can highlight a function in the C and it shows it to me in the assembly. 
and highlights it there too but over here in Ida it's a little bit more difficult um, you can't really see the two there together again the new version 7 the interface may be different um, just poking around a bit more you can poke around a lot in fact you could spend your life inside an executable that's why I picked a small one and yeah again you can set your breakpoints you can I'm just trying to find something interesting to show you guys um, it's it's really just code it's it's not that interesting after you've gotten over the novelty of it um, I guess the real novelty here is that the Ghidra product is not going to cost me an arm and a leg um, I can do the same decompilation and figure out what malware does without having to uh, break the bank and there's those randomly named functions I've got classes and namespaces and all kinds of stuff in here so I find that a little bit easier to find things than Ida okay yeah at this point in time the code that I have like I said the code I've met come across kind of looks very similar between the two so the decompilation is based on a very similar outcome which is good so the other one had a return this one has a return just looking to make sure that um, similar procedures obviously it's a bit difficult different function names but similar procedures and functions are outputting the same sort of code which they are so as far as I'm concerned these products are doing the same job Yeah, there we go. We've got uh, a return there, and we had um, we oh, I've lost the code here now, but we had a return on the other one. So again, it spat out similar results, um, which is great. And these are, by the way, highlighted. I can jump between bits of code by clicking on the the function names and things like that. Just going to the exports to find out what comes out. Um, just to see how Ida handles the exports. And just having a look through some of the the options that we've got here in Ida, so you can do hex dumps. Here's the exports here. That tells me where the address is, that what the actual process is that's going to do an export. So I can go through and look at that. So it's kind of laid out differently. Um, I think I have to do a bit more hunting around in Ida than I do in Ghidra. Uh, the graphical view so that you can actually see the functions lined at, lot sorry lined out um, and yeah let's just pull that up and zoom in there we go so you can see the relationship between each of the functions and what outputs from one that inputs to the next um, it's standard part of code really difference here is an executable going across into Ghidra pull up a similar sort of view a little bit longer in Ghidra I noticed I don't know whether it's pulling up and creating more graphing functions but um, it is there that is the graph and yeah it, it's very similar when you zoom in it's uh, pretty much come to the same conclusion where all the entry points are and exit points between functions it's laid out a little bit different but really when you start to line these things up it comes down to how it looks best on the page Yeah, so there's also the various pop-ups and things when you hover over code it tells you a bit more about it the pop-ups appear in both of them as well so at the moment there's nothing from one that's better than the other if you go into the the help for IDA um, other than the fact I have an old version so therefore the help file looks a little ancient it's using the old CHM format um, but it's got a lot of information in Ida uh, it does have a lot of assumption that you understand what's written in here uh, for instance, this get structure side is pretty much raw code. Um, with the uh, Ghidra one, it's a little different to this. So this this kind of assumes you've already been trained a lot in programming and development. Whereas if you go across to Ghidra, it just looks nicer. 
um, I haven't really spent a lot of time comparing the validity of what's written in here um, but it looks nice it's got screenshots it's obviously not in CHM format it's a newer format it just reads easier behaves easier um, everything about it just looks a little bit fresher and nicer so yeah at the moment um, really what I wanted to do with this video was show you what Ida was because people are talking about it you just need to know it's a very expensive decompiler you can spit your XE out into C code and see what's going on in there um, and really Ghidra that's what it does as well it's just that one costs you a fortune and one's for free from the NSA and a lot of people are wondering why is it free well it's this the saying is that they're trying to train people for future employment at the NSA by releasing the code you can play with it and learn it first I personally think it's because they may be wanting to see how the public takes the open source and uh, adds to it and extends on it without the NSA having to pay for it. Now here we go, we're now exiting IDA and we're telling it what to do with the database it created. Um, I usually tell it to not save the database unless I'm going to hand it to someone else. I normally finish what I want to do in the one session so I don't worry about it. Whereas over here with Ghidra, when I exit, do you want to save the actual executable? Uh, no, let's not do that. So they exit a little bit different. But other than that, that's what IDA is. So when we're talking about IDA, that's what we're talking about. When we talk about Ghidra, that's what we're talking about. So if we're geeking out and you can't geek with us, now you can. And that's it. So thank you for watching.